think I got triggered. So, all right, I, um, I've been trying to do this movie vlog, and obviously the last two weeks I have not done anything um, as far as the actual vlog goes, and that's going to be a kind of permanent thing, uh, and I'll talk about that more near the end, but long story short, I'm not going to do it the way I was doing it because it doesn't quite work for how I like to watch movies. Um, I, it's hard to watch one every single day, and then what ends up happening is I'll get like three behind on my movie watch, and then I, I, I have to just p put all of those into that like Sunday so I can have a vlog ready for Monday. And it, it doesn't really work for me. Um, now, that doesn't mean I'm going to quit the challenge. It doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing the movie vlogs. It just means that it's not going to be a weekly thing. And I think that's all right because I don't think a lot of people really wanted to watch a weekly vlog of me watching movie movies. It's They're routinely the uh, lowest viewed uh, uh, videos that I put out, which I realize that all my videos are low views, but those are like the lowest views. Uh, so, you know, I'm still going to do it. I know that there are people who do enjoy these videos, but I also recognize that it's a better use of my time to uh, A, be healthy, and B, um, put out videos that are more interesting to a larger group of people. Uh, that way I can build the channel and uh, eventually have more time to spend on these little niche projects, which, I mean, it's already all niche projects, so not a huge difference. So, anyway, um, I couldn't finish a movie. And when I say I couldn't finish a movie, I couldn't get past the first ten minutes of a movie. And that movie was Last Minute in Aleppo. I am going to finish this movie. It is one of movies films for the month. Uh, it's, it's uh, I think there's 16 days left to watch it, so I will watch it at some point in those 16 days. Uh, and I plan on watching every single movie that movie puts out this year. It's still the challenge that I'm going to try to do. I will see how it goes. March is very busy. I do have a movie that we're going to shoot in like April or May. It's a lot of stuff. Uh, I think I can do it though, because I keep going, getting behind on the films. And yeah, overall, I, I, I've, I've managed. I'm currently... I think two behind, not counting Aleppo. Uh, no, I'm three behind. I'm three behind, not counting Aleppo. Uh, so, and, th and that's fine, because there are some days where I'll watch two in a day, and eventually if I do enough of those two or three in a day uh, kind of marathons, it works out fine. There are some days I just don't want to watch uh, a movie, though, um, at least a movie movie. Nothing against movie. Obviously, I love movie. Um, the most awkward streaming service name to say with your mouth hole. Uh, but... The problem I had just uh, a couple weeks ago was I started Last Minute in Aleppo, and I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. And I attribute that to the fact that I'm a father now, the fact that I'm a dad. And it made me think, or it kind of gave me the idea to kind of approach this whole movie vlog thing from a different perspective. And that perspective is, well, what is it that these movies are making me feel or think in a moment? And then if I have a thought that really deserves a video uh, that I really want to get out there, then I can, I can make the videos. And so here we are. This is a very roundabout way of saying that this is a vlog about what it means uh, to be a father and how it affects your movie watching. Now, I've always been um, reasonably emotional, uh, but and I say reasonably because I think we all cried at the end of Paddington 2. That's nothing abnormal. Literally everyone has done it. It is nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, crying isn't anything to be ashamed of. But I sobbed like a bitch <laughs> at the end of Paddington 2. Um, so I definitely understand, you know, where these emotions come from. I understand how movies can affect you emotionally. I have cried during movies. Um, but I have never been watching a movie and told myself, I, I can't watch this. I've never had that feeling. And so for it to actually happen was striking. I think that this is an extreme example. Last Minute Aleppo, uh, literally the first five minutes you see, I think literally the first five minutes, I, I haven't gone back to actually check the timestamp, but roughly the first five minutes, uh, you literally see a dead baby being pulled out from rubble in Aleppo. And it's horrifying. It's one of the most gruesome, awful things I've ever seen. And, you know, 
I, obviously that's the point of the movie. The point of the movie is to say, hey, you need to pay attention to what's going on in this other country. You need to recognize that these white hats are doing a lot of great work and that human suffering is occurring, etc., etc. And I respect that. I also already held that understanding and belief, so I didn't really need to watch the baby being pulled out from the rubble. It certainly uh, will never leave my brain, so good job, movie. Uh, but it, you know, it's... It's tough because before I was a parent, I don't, you know, I certainly would have thought that's gruesome, that's awful. I don't think I would have had to stop watching, but I had this very visceral, visceral reaction of, I, I can't watch this right now. And that's weird. Like, I've never had that feeling. I've watched everything. I've watched, you know, I mean, I've watched all sorts of documentaries. Uh, Dear Zachary, I've watched m multiple times. Uh, mostly to fuck with friends. I've watched Cannibal Holocaust uh, twice, I think. Um, obviously, you know, not that much, but it, you know, you see a turtle brutally murdered. That that sucks. But it's just it's so much to deal with. And and this whole vlog, I know this isn't very formatted. This is just me kind of blurting out word salad, and I apologize. But uh, it's just it's so weird being a dad and your whole perspective just changing. Even in something as silly and outlandish as Children of the Dead. So Children of the Dead uh, came out last year, and it's this um, Austrian film. It's silent. It uh, was shot on uh, Super 8 millimeter film. And it's kind of a social commentary, comedy kind of thing. And it's very, very silly. It's extremely silly. There's one scene where there's this forester who's out in the woods, and he's going to kill himself. And he runs into these Syrians. It's a whole thing. Uh, he runs into these Syrians uh, and tells them about how he lost his two sons and uh, for whatever reason he was the reason that they died and he's, you know, come to the forest to kill himself. And later in the film he sees his two sons and they're, they're grown up, they're like, you know, 20-something. And it was a really... <laughs> emotional moment for me, even though it's a dumb movie. It's a very, very dumb film. It's it's good. Like, I recommend you watch it. Uh, it's fairly recent on movie, so, you know, you have basically a month to watch it. Uh, definitely recommend. But, like, that moment would never have done anything to me emotionally. I would have just laughed and moved on. But because I have these feelings now that have just sprung up from my, my wife popping out a nugget, I, I, I didn't cry, but I, you know, I got that, that feeling of, oh, poor guy. And you know, my empathy in general has gone up too. Um, uh, one of the most recent movies I watched, one movie was Buoyancy. Buoyancy was another 2019 movie, I believe. And uh, I think it, I, I could be mistaken, but I think it was Australia's submission for the Academy Awards, which they, they didn't make it, but I, I wish it did. It would have been a, it wouldn't have won. There, it had no chance in hell, but I think it would have been an important movie to have. It's about, um, basically how these, um, I guess, Southeast Asian illegal fishing operations work. Uh, basically, there's a lot of these um, slave labor-based fishing boats that go out and they catch fish, and they um, are a big... They, they sell worldwide, but it's apparently a big problem in Australia where supermarkets carry all these fish that are obtained through illegal means and a lot of human slavery. And it follows a young kid who, uh, I think he's 14 in the movie, and he uh, he goes to get work, and he winds up on this boat, and you kind of get this... Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to have a review of it later. Um, we'll talk about this in a second, but I'll have a review uh, later. But the point is, it's about a child who is put into illegal slavery, and it had me hooked. I wouldn't say it ever had me, like, emotionally, like, you know, really drained or anything, but it definitely... I'm not sure I would have been as into it um, as I was... Then and it's also a very pretty movie. Again, I'll, I'll talk about it in a review later. Uh, Paradise is another one that I watched recently on movie. It's this very artsy film, and I, I don't think it's for everybody. I do think it's very good. I saw a lot of negative reviews, and I disagree completely with them. Uh, I do think that it is a there's a specific audience. I don't know what that audience is, but there's a lot of scenes in a concentration camp, and there are some children that it focuses on. So the concentration camps feature a lot of uh, children stuff. Um, there's also a child at one point who sees his father murdered in front of him, and that all very visceral for me. Um, and not hard to watch per se, but it definitely 
you know, it, 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 like buoyancy, I felt myself glued to the screen because of these kids. And I don't think pre-baby Michael would have cared as much. Um, and it's, it's interesting. Maybe I just never had empathy. <laughs> maybe, maybe I just like got <laughs> bashed over the head with empathy, with the empathy stick. Uh, and now I just have it. Soy Nero, about a young Mexican guy who gets into the States and he's gonna join the military. It's based on a true story, uh, but he's basically just trying to get his citizenship through the military. Another one where, like, I see these young people struggling to get into the United States and trying to get away from a bad life and how they, how, like, this is gonna turn me into an SJW on the internet, I think, but how white people treat him differently and all that, like, just because he, and he's not even, like, he's not even that young. He's, like, 18, 19 years old. But just for some reason just, oh, hurt me. Um, a, a less direct example would be um, Yuzo Kawashima's Burden of Love. Burden of Love, it's a uh, dramedy about this health minister in Japan who he has this plan to combat the uh, really high birth rates that are kind of, uh, I guess, devastating the nation. And... Basically, the his plan is very. It, I think it's supposed to be very liberal for the time, but it, uh, nowadays it comes off a little bit more conservative. Uh, and basically, it's like we got to get rid of prostitution, all these red light districts. We got to get rid of those. We got to mandate that you can't have a kid until you're married, and blah 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 blah. And then pre, uh, then at the same time uh, as this is happening, and he's really campaigning. He uh, his wife becomes pregnant. His secretary becomes pregnant with his son's child. And uh, his daughter becomes pregnant. One of his daughters becomes pregnant. So everybody's getting pregnant. Uh, there's some more twist to it uh, regarding some previous uh, stuff that the father did. And I felt for all these people so much because I, you know, I'm, I'm a pro-choice guy. But there is that feeling that when you are going to have a baby and you, you can have all these opinions leading up to that moment. But then you actually find out that it's going to be your baby and you... Your, your mindset changes, and it's just like, this is my baby, and he's going to, you know, be this beautiful boy, and I can't wait, and I'm going to raise him and be the best dad in the world, and, uh, you know, a big part of that whole pro-choice thing is choice, you know. The, the idea of these characters being robbed of that due to class issues, or arbitrary laws, or government mandates, political clout, it's just, it's its enthralling, and I'm not sure it would be that way without the kiddo. <laughs> um, so this isn't, you know, uh, this is, again, this is a vlog, it's not a video essay. I guess the idea is perspectives change, and if you already have a child, you probably already know this, but uh, if you don't have a child, if you, you know, have a kind of negative view of fatherhood, uh, it's not for everybody, obviously. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of people who would have the opposite reaction that I'm having, but it, it's filled my life with a new kind of brand of emotion and has completely changed how I view movies for the most part. Um, there's a lot of movies now that I'll just, I'll watch them and there's that little extra bit of emotion that I get out of them because of fatherhood and in the case of Last Minute in Aleppo, it makes it legitimately hard to watch something that otherwise I probably would have just been okay with. I mean, it's still... This is, it, Last Minute Aleppo is a very specific case. I mean, that is a heavy movie. But I do think that I was a colder person before and could have handled it better. Um, it doesn't mean I was emotionless. It just means that I had a different view. Um, I don't know that there's a point to this beyond just saying that that's a beautiful thing. Uh, I guess if I had to find a point <laughs> for all of this rambling, it would be that, you know, Never assume your perspective won't change. Uh, I guess in a more esoteric way, uh, you know, don't be afraid to go back and rewatch and see how your perspective has changed on movies. I'm very curious to see how other films that I've enjoyed or even not enjoyed have changed based on uh, this newfound perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so the movie vlog is not going to be weekly anymore. It is going to be something that I do whenever I feel like just talking about something like this, whether it be a renewed perspective or whatever. Uh, if I'm just wanting to talk about a single movie, I'm going to 
post it as a separate movie review. Uh, that way I can just mix them in with all my other movie reviews. Um, I don't really do a lot of reviews right now. Uh, my plan is to try and sprinkle in like two or three a week if I can. Uh, along with a big video on Thursdays. So Thursdays will be my kind of big video uh, moments. Uh, this week I've got a very, very special review that I'm very excited about that's going to be a lot different from my normal way of doing things. And uh, yeah, there's going to be a few more commercial things I'll be talking about, a few more mainstream things. Uh, that's more to just catfish the normies. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do a series <laughs> called Catfishing the Normies. We'll get there. Um, but I'm very excited for everything going forward. I am still working on the movie vlog. If you want to just keep up with what I'm watching, uh, I am going to try to talk about them more on Twitter. So follow me on Twitter, at Michael Keen. Uh, and then I do have a Letterboxd account that's linked in the description. Uh, follow me there. I post everything. I also have a, um, a ranking of all the movie, movie movies that I am watching, or have watched, rather. Uh, I just passed 50. So I've <laughs> watched, watched a lot of movies this year. It's only... It's only fucking February. Let me know if you've had any perspective changes in your life. It doesn't even have to be uh, having a child. It could be totally different you know, life circumstances uh, that have changed how you viewed cinema and how you react to things. Um, I'm sorry if anybody was offended by my way of uh, <laughs> promoting this video. Uh, I know it's kind of a, a clickbaity title. Yeah, you get you gotta eat, gotta get that diaper money. Um, so, yeah, this is the least funny video I've ever made. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I will let you know what I feel about Last Minute in Aleppo when I can stomach finishing it. And uh, until next time, man, go watch a movie.